City of Rome, the Eternal City. Let's explore how eternal it really is. This is where ancient, medieval, and 21st century collide. Lungo Tevere, the ancient bridges that cross the Tiber River, the Vatican Museums, the Roman Forum, the Fountain of Trevi, the Colosseum. The beautiful Piazza Navona. The dream that was once Rome is truly still here. You just have to have a knife for it. You'll see it. You will definitely get a taste of eternity. St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican City. The center of the Catholic world. With its dome designed by Michelangelo, this magnificent structure has an awe-inspiring interior. This place is huge, but everything is in such proportion that the scale escapes you. To give you a comparison, you can fit the Statue of Liberty underneath the dome and room to spare. That's awesome. Approaching from the square, above this basic structure there's an attic with eight square windows decorated with small pilasters surmounted by a balustrade and 13 statues in travertine. These statues represent Christ the Redeemer on the center 19 feet high. St. John the Baptist and 11 apostles, including St. Matthias for witnessing the resurrection. The structure you see today isn't the original Basilica of St. Peter. It's actually number two. The original church was built in the fourth century by Emperor Constantine, the first Christian Roman Emperor, on the spot where St. Peter was thought to be buried. By the early Renaissance, the ancient church was in serious disrepair. In 1506, Pope Julius II made the decision to tear down the entire structure and build a new one. The result is a masterpiece of Renaissance architecture. It was completed and consecrated the 18th of November, 1626. The length is 730 feet. The width is 500 feet and the height is 448 feet. The dome outer diameter is 137.7 feet and the inner is 136.1 feet. Apart from its spiritual importance, with the miraculous touch of the greatest Italian architects of the late Renaissance era, designed principally by Donato Bramante, Michelangelo, Carlo Maderno and Gian Lorenzo Bernini. It is the most renowned work of Renaissance architecture and one of the largest churches in the world. It still holds the record for the highest dome in the world. We enter the portico through the main entrance. The northernmost door in bronze is the Holy Door, which is by tradition only open for great celebrations such as the Jubilee years. The most recent openings was when Pope Paul II opened the Holy Door in the Jubilee years of 1983-84 and 2000-2001. What's behind me? Get into St. Peter. Just imagine, pilgrims have been entering here for centuries. World leaders, emperors, kings, queens, dictators, presidents, prime ministers, believers and unbelievers, they pass through the same doors to visit the most holy and grandiest church on earth. As soon as we enter through the bronze doors, our eyes point directly at the altar. Il baldacchino made by Bernini, illuminated by a bright light shining from the windows of Michelangelo's dome. We are at the first altar to the right of the entrance. It is Michelangelo's Pietà. 
since its creation in 1499, it has inspired emotion, faith, and imitation. Carved from a single slab of Carrara marble, it is the only work Michelangelo ever signed. The signature can be found across Mary's chest. He later regret the vanity of this act and resolved never to sign a piece of his work again. He was only 24 years old. In the right front corner of the nave is the bronze statue of St. Peter, enthroned. It is robed and crowned, and on its outstretched foot, its right toes are worn down by centuries of pilgrims who traditionally touch the foot. And now, the Chapel of the Baptistry. The lid is made of a rich bowl in red porphyry, believed to derive from the tomb of Emperor Adrian in his mausoleum, which is Castel Sant'Angelo today. And we arrive at the tomb of the great Pope John Paul II from 1978 to 2005. The tomb is really just a reflection of the life he led. It was a life of humility, prayer, and simplicity. St. Pope John XXIII, canonized on April 27, 2014, rests at the altar of St. Jerome. We watch a procession of altar boys and priests going back to the sacristy after one of the many masses that are celebrated here throughout the day. Most of the spectacular works of art that look like paintings are really mosaics made of tiny tiles, each about the size of a fingernail. Mosaics were chosen over paintings to decorate the basilica so that they wouldn't be vulnerable to the ravages of time, smoke, and humidity. Eternal art for the eternal church. Stand under the 96-foot-high altar canopy, the baldacchino, with its twisting columns cast by Bernini in 1524 using the bronze extracted from the Pantheon. Below the papal altar, it's the sunken confessio, the 17th century chapel named in honor of the Confession of Peter. It is better seen from the crypt or grottoes below where there is a glass wall looking into it. Although the baldacchino and the papal altar stand over Peter's tomb, the tomb itself cannot be seen either from here or in the crypt. Peter's tomb is on the other side of the niche at the back of the confessio and it can only be seen in a special scavi tour of the ancient necropolis. Many people do not know, but this is built on top of an old Roman cemetery. Behind the altar, against the back wall, there is a massive confessionary of gold and bronze and filtered sunlight with the symbol of the Holy Spirit coming through called the Cathedra Petri, the throne of Peter. Within the four piers supporting the dome are the statues associated with the basilica's primary holy relics. Saint Helena holding the true cross. Saint Longinus was the Roman centurion who pierced the side of Christ to the lands. He is said to have converted after experiencing the darkness after Christ's death. The southeast pier, Saint Andrew, with his trademark diagonal cross upon which he was martyred. The relic is Andrew's head, which was returned to the Greek Orthodox Church in 1964. Saint Veronica. This one's my favorite for some reason. She was the poor pious woman who Jesus cured and who met him again on the road to Calgary, where she wiped his face when he fell under the weight of the cross. Miraculously, he left the image of his face on the cloth. 
the Crusaders brought back a veil of Veronica to Rome from Jerusalem. It was highly venerated, especially during the Middle Ages, and it was mentioned by Dante in the Divina Commedia. The crypt underneath the church shouldn't be missed. It contains architectural fragments from earlier churches on the site and the tombs of many popes, including the simple tomb of John Paul II. On your way out as you exit from the crypt is the entrance to the dome and roof in the northern courtyard between the church and the Vatican Palace. The views from the gallery around the cupola provide an impressive sense of enormity of the church. Along the base of the inside of the dome is the encryption of Matthew in letters 8 feet high. Translated, it means, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Near the top of the dome is another smaller circular encryption. Translated, it means, to the glory of St. Peter, Sixtus V, Pope in the year 1590 and the fifth year of his pontificate. From the gallery stairs we continue to the roof where you step out into the east side of the dome. This provides a sweeping view of St. Peter's Square and Vatican City from behind the huge statues on the facade. For more impressive views we clip more stairs that lead to the lantern at the top of the dome. The iconic dome can be reached by climbing 491 steps of very narrow and exhausting staircase. In some places there is no room for the railings and one can climb upstairs by holding a rope that runs down the middle. Although the climb at some places is narrow, the availability of an elevator aids you in the climb 171 steps lesser making it more convenient for the initial phase of the climb. Before reaching the top, make sure you take a deep breath. You will need it for this magnificent, breathtaking scenery. From the square all the way down via de la Conciliazione into the Tiber River and Castel Sant'Angelo. The Vatican Gardens. Walking around the lantern, you see the Vittoriano with the Colosseum way behind, the Pantheon, and of course the rest of Rome. We descend from the lantern and we plan the rest of the day going to the Vatican Museums. This has been an amazing pilgrimage for my son and I. Meeting relatives that day made it even more exciting and special. One last look at this beautiful scenery before we head down. It's hard to believe they raised all these materials, including statues, with just wooden cranes and plain old labor. Join us in our next video as we visit the Vatican Museum. It is considered to be the largest museum of ancient and medieval times. Arrivederci.